is in your bulletin. It's from Colossians, Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Amen. Well, a few years back, Facebook did a study. Well, I talk about Facebook a lot. I really do. I have no idea why. But a few years back, Facebook did a study about what people who use Facebook are more, most thankful for. And they even broke it down state by state. Some of these were interesting. Uh, four different states in the Midwest were more, most thankful for thunderstorms. Uh, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas are, uh, said rain. Uh, all across the South, they gave answers like God's love, God's forgiveness, mercy, salvation, and things like that. Several of the coastal states said the ocean or living by the beach. Maryland, this one is weird. Maryland is thankful for having a sound mind. <laughs> which probably is some criticism of surrounding states, I would imagine. <laughs> for some odd reason, Virginia, Maryland, and California are thankful for YouTube, which allows, <laughs> which allows me to better understand the participants and the validity of this uh, study. Anyway, unfortunately, they did ultimately come up with top ten things that people in general were thankful for, and these do seem to be a little bit more genuine. Number 10 is music. Music is a big part of our lives. Number 9 on the list was uh, life. Having life. No argument there. Next was having a roof over their heads. And then that was followed by children and spouse and then a job. I'll give you the top three. The top three were number 3 was health. Number 2 was family. And number 1, any guesses? Friends. Friends is number 1. None of these are really, really too surprising. Today's very uh, short piece of scripture reminds us about being thankful. And I think most of us will say that we are thankful for at least something. Uh, but even more than that, this scripture reminds us about giving thanks. It reminds us to give thanks to God. And whatever we do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Now, of course, this Thursday, we're going to be celebrating Thanksgiving. And the very, I mean, so I was thinking about Thanksgiving, and of course, writing a sermon about being thankful. So I was thinking about Thanksgiving, and the very name I was thinking about, the very name of this holiday, actually uh, gives what it's for. It's a day for giving thanks. But I wonder, I wonder how many of us actually give thanks on Thanksgiving. Sure, it's a tradition for many families to maybe go around the table and say what we're thankful for. But stating what we're thankful for is actually different than giving thanks for what we are thankful for. Giving thanks involves giving. Thanksgiving is a verb. If I borrow a hammer from Rick, and um, I really needed a hammer, chances are that I'm going to, and I know he has a hammer. Yeah. Um, chances are that I'm going to be very thankful. I might say to myself, oh, I am thankful that Rick lent me that hammer. But again, being thankful and giving thanks are not the same thing. When we give thanks, we acknowledge our gratitude not only to ourselves, but also to the one who is the source of the gratitude. So, for the use of the hammer, I may give thanks or show gratitude by returning the favor. Maybe Rick needs a saw. Rick doesn't need a saw. Rick's got all that. But, but maybe he did. Over ten, maybe Rick needs a saw. Or maybe I'll buy him a little gift. Or send a card or an email. Or just simply say to him how thankful I am for the use of your hammer. Giving thanks is giving back. When I look at today's scripture from Colossians, I almost think that the two sections of the passage should be switched. Because I think if we switch them, it would be a little bit easier to understand what the author is trying to say. Remember it said, and whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. By switching the two sections, the passage would now read like this. To give thanks to God, whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Or in other words, the way that we give thanks to God is to live and to speak and to act according to the message that God sent through Christ. That's what God wants from us. God showers us with endless blessings. And what God wants is that in return we follow God's word. Not just on Thanksgiving, 
but every day. Because God does not bless us only on Thanksgiving, but every day. There are so many things in our lives that are wonderful when they happen. Uh, we get a new job, we fall in love, we, uh, a family comes to visit, we graduate from school. And these are times when we're filled with gladness. And these are times like that when we know that we're blessed. We, when we notice that we've been given a gift, we walk on a cloud because of something that's happened or something we've been given. And often others celebrate with us birthdays, marriages. I just did a wedding recently over at Little Brown Church where the groom cried through the entire ceremony. <laughs> he cried when we walked out together, and then the doors opened. He continued crying, and she walked down the aisle, and he cried through the whole rest of the ceremony. We never stopped. These are the times in our lives when we are very in touch with our joy. We are very connected with feeling thankful. This Thursday, many of us will gather with others. Many of us will enjoy a meal with family and friends, and we will celebrate what we're thankful for. The meal of abundance symbolizes the abundance of blessings that we've been given. But today's passage reminds us that we shouldn't rely on seasons or events to acknowledge each of the blessings in our lives. The passage reminds us to give thanks to God in whatever we do, in word or deed. Even if it's an ordinary day, there are many things to be thankful for. You know, sometimes it's hard to get up early, go to work, fight the traffic. Let us thank God for allowing us to have a job that we can use to provide for ourselves and for our family. Let us thank God for the car that is getting us to that job. And for all of those who have our health, let us thank God that we are healthy enough to go to work. Let us thank God that we're here to see another day. That we have our friends, that we have our family, that we have a roof over our head, that we have food and drink. We can take all of these things for granted. There are so many people in this world that don't have these things. I was thinking about the tradition I mentioned earlier about going around the table and saying what we're thankful for. And I had an idea for a variation on this tradition. If you don't have this tradition in your table, uh, or at your table, you can try this idea by uh, with your own thoughts, or you can create a tradition. What if this year, instead of thinking about or saying out loud what we're thankful for, what if we told ourselves or spoke out loud to others how we plan on giving thanks? Rather than simply saying, I am thankful for my new home, maybe we say, I am thankful for my new home. And I'm giving thanks by making a donation to Habitat for Humanity so others might have a new home. Rather than simply saying, I'm thankful to have my family around me. Maybe we say, I'm thankful to have my family around me. And I'm going to make sure, but I'm going to also make sure that I keep in better contact with and visit my friends who live by themselves and may sometimes be lonely. If we develop this tradition, we actually will be giving thanks by word and by deed. There are so many other possibilities for ways that we can give thanks. And remember, when we do for others, we are giving thanks to God, who is the source of our blessings. And doing for others, living as Christ taught us, is how we give thanks to God in word and in deed. In the first half of the 17th century, Germany was experiencing a war, a plague, and just a terrible, terrible time. And living there was a pastor named Martin Rinkart. And he saw death all around him, including many in his own family. However, during this terribly, terribly dark time in history, Pastor Reinhardt wrote 66 sacred songs and hymns. Among the songs that he wrote were the hymn that we began this service with today. And he wrote these lyrics as sorrow surrounded him. Now thank we all our God, with hearts and hands and voices, who wondrous things hath done, in whom his world rejoices, who from our mother's arms hath blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love, and still is ours today. Reinhardt demonstrated a valuable lesson to us all. Thankfulness does not wait for prosperity or peace. It is always time to praise God and to give thanks to God for the wondrous things that God has given and the wondrous things that God has done. We've heard